Hello and welcome everyone to this juice coding tutorial. This time I'm going to talk about parameters. More specifically, I'm going to talk about the different units that are being used when making parameters. For example, I have a feedback parameter here which can go to negative and positive 100%, a damping parameter with hertz and um, an octave parameter in octaves semitone parameter in semitones and a fine tone parameter in fine tones. Each of these parameters has a different way of displaying its value. In a juice plugin this is handled by giving the parameter a certain function on its creation and I call this the value to string lambda. So in my code base I have a namespace for value to string lambdas for all kinds of units and I also have a namespace for string to value lambdas. Obviously the value to string lambda is important when you are having these values down here but when do you actually use the string to value lambdas? Well you use them when you right click on a parameter and enter a value or however that works in a given plugin. For example I could type in 20% and it will yield that value or minus 70% then it will go there and you see that works and it has to work for all of these parameters no matter how they work so it can be a little bit more complicated like here when you have the k that indicates that it's hertz times thousand but not the entire parameter is in kilohertz some of it is just hertz you know so there can be a lot of edge cases and i want to talk about one of these today which is in my tuning editor where you can change the bass note and as you can see this is basically the notation of MIDI notes. When you Google MIDI note, you find stuff like this, a table that goes from 0 to 127. So basically that shows us that a parameter that uses MIDI notes has to be in that exact range. And then every one of these numbers corresponds to a certain note value, which also has a certain frequency at least if we use exactly this formula there can be different ways to go about that for example when changing the concert pitch and stuff like that but i don't want to go too much into detail about that now now this video is only about converting these numbers into these strings or more like the strings into the values so if i go to the implementation side of things now here are all the string to value functions which happen when you are actually inputting a string and i will show you what happens on this one exactly this is basically a lambda for some reason it doesn't give me a minimize thingy but it's just this really long thing here it could be explained really quickly like this you have an input text you put it to lowercase so that everything that looks like this becomes this because you know it could be interpret it the same way you just have to deal with less letters then then i'm calculating a value from the input text because it might still be that people just enter the exact midi number that they want to have like 69 for the typical base number which is an a4 or a3 concept pitch depending on who you ask and yeah i'm checking if the value is within zero and lower than 128 and if yes then i'm returning it and if no then there has to be something more complex going on here this entire part of the code is just trying to figure out what that string means in terms of numbers and if that didn't work out for some reason I'm just taking whatever the value currently is and limit it between 0 and 127 inclusive. Now I want to show you what this actually does. So first of all, I defined all the pitch classes of one octave. You don't have to choose both C sharp and D flat for that because this only makes sure that every pitch class has a number like 0, 1, 2, 3, for so it can be quantified better. You will see why that is important soon. And then the next enum, which is an enum class, is the current state of the things that happen. And because we're going to do stuff in a for loop where we are going through the entire string, we have to keep track of what we want to do with this string with the state variable. So I'm making a state and I'm letting it start at pitch class, which means that we want to figure out which pitch class we are in in the first place. So now let's pretend we are currently reading a string and that string starts with the letter D. So that would mean since we are lowercase that we have a D. Oh. What's this? Uh, 
Don't use Toloa here. GitHub Copilot can be so funny, but also distracting. <laughs> okay, so we have a D here and we don't want to write the sentence thanks. Um, that would mean we are in this second if where the character is D. So we return for the value D. D corresponds to two. So the value now is two. We have a value of two. This entire for loop can only be one of these cases. We return back to the beginning of the for loop, but now i is one. So we read the second character and that might be a sharp. Yeah, D sharp four, why not? But now we just have D sharp, okay. Um, and that means because we have reached the end of the pitch class state and the state was now flat or sharp. Now we are searching if stuff is flat or sharp. Now is the character this? Yeah, it is. So we're going one up with the value. It could also be that it's B and then we would go down one. And it could also be that it's none of this because maybe we go on with the number directly, in which case we would go one back with the variable of the loop because we want to look at the same character again, but with a different question. Let's just say we have used this. The next question is, do we have a sign? Yeah, because it might be that there is a minus, for example, when you have minus one. So we're at the beginning of the for loop again and go into the sign state. Character is minus, then sign mult is minus one. Sign mult was a variable that was set here. Or oh, it can actually be auto. And um, else it is one. And if there was no sign, then we have to go back with the index again so that we can look at the same letter again, but with a different question, which is if we have any octaves. So let's just say we are done here. Maybe D sharp four as previously suggested by GitHub Copilot. And now we are in the octave state and we get the digit from the character, which is just this little function. Now we have the digit of this character and it can be something between zero and nine. And if it is not, then it's not a digit. And that means something went wrong. And we return the default base pitch of 69. But if we get into the else state, which is the state where we want to be, we add to the value digit times 12, because every number in the digit corresponds to an octave. So to exactly 12 notes. And then we are also multiplying that with sine mult, because if we had a minus number, then you know, we would have to go down with the new values instead of up. Then we also add 12 to the value because this is the last state in general. And if you look at this table closely, then you see that it's kind of weird, you know, 24 is C1, that means C0. For some reason, it, it's not shown here on the table, but on C0, we would have 12. So zero is not C0, but zero is C minus one. And that's why we have to add 12 to the entire thing for no reason. I don't know who came up with that. I find it unnecessarily complicated, but that's just how it is. Then I decided to also put these while loops here that would octave the thing up and down if they exceed the value for some reason. I don't know if that's a case that can happen. Maybe the lower than zero part can happen if you try to do something like this minus minus four because it only goes down to minus one. Yeah, if for some reason we have still not returned the value from any of these things and we are still in this loop. I don't know if this can actually happen. Then I just decided that I return 69 because this is just an edge case that has no real handling. But I could also imagine that maybe it might be better to just keep it out here in general and just use this case after the loop. I don't know. It might of course be that some of these things are not perfect in this function. You can just take this as a little inspiration for your own implementation of, an, of a, a MIDI node parameter and kind of take it as a base implementation to improve on.